take this to get my remote to work. Right, so um, I've been asked to, do, to deliver this talk on behalf of the Scottish Government today. So, um, and the point is to really get the message across about cybersecurity and how it would affect businesses and, in general, more public businesses, like, for example, public um, schools and so on. So, because all of us have a vested interest in all of these things to try and make um, a safer environment for, for everyone. So, so, for example, now, the thing we're going to talk about today is how we are going to respond to a cyber attack. What, what are you going to do? What is your obligations towards actually going ahead with that? So, we'll go through a couple of scenarios. Um, some of you may have experienced these scenarios as well before. I hope that you haven't yet, but if you do, um, do get to experience some of these scenarios. Just, just know that, it, that there is help, but to get help, you need to speak up. Okay, so let's go over, over a couple of these. So part of this is um, the cyber attacks are escalating every single day. Every day there seems to be one or other organization that, that has suffered a breach or some kind of things. Um, the vast majority of the breaches so far are underreported. And with, the, with GDPR coming in probably later on in the year, it's going to be a real issue in trying to get ahead of all of these kind of things. So, so what we'll talk about is, so what are you supposed to do? So, first of all, who've seen these kind of words before? Eclipse Twain, Englishman's Dentist, right? Emerald Thread, Esteem Audit, Erratic Gopher. All of these, all of these things look really, really funny names, you know, and so on. So, for example, Eternal Energy or Eternal Synergy, Eternal ro Romance, Love Me Long Time, and all that, you know. So, so we can have a look and see what, what, what these things are. So, towards the tail end of last year, um, somebody had a catastrophic breach in their organization. That particular organization was the National Security Agency, or NSA, in the US. All of these names that you see here are tools that have been leaked from the National um, Security Agency. These are tools that spies use to spy on other governments. Right, they lost control of these tools. Very soon, these tools were converted for other purposes, to breach organizations, organizations' defenses, and so on. So, for example, um, the first thing that came out of this, the very, very first attack that came from this was Dark Pulsar. Dark Pulsar, we now know as WannaCry. Okay, so we all saw what the impact of WannaCry was then but there are loads more to come. Now, I'm not just having a little, little crystal ball. So, so far, a year later, only three or so of these attacks or these tools have been used so far. So, there's loads more in the archive. Okay, so let's, so let's have a quick look. So, so what? These tools are out there. We have to do something about it. Fortunately, Microsoft and all of the other partners a year ago had said, right, we will patch this, these vulnerabilities immediately. We will make sure that these things don't end up on our systems. Okay. Um, they are hacking tools. We, we have seen now, um, it started off with WannaCry, closely followed by NotPetya. We, um, we saw Bad Rabbit a bit later on as well. And there's going to be many, many more of these things popping up. So, so let us set the scene. All right. So 
you are, in a, you are a senior decision maker within, for example, a government department, for example, let's take, let's take for example, Digital Transformation Scotland, which is a charitable organization, but this organization links directly to the Scottish government. You have a network connection directly internally. Right, so, um, so besides all that, you have your own internal running network. Now, the next thing that happens, so, um, so you have a organization that is looking to promote digital transformation to the third sector. Now, you have a public facing website, um, which is also transactional so that you can take transactions from businesses, from individuals and so on, to be able to apply for grants and stuff online. Yay! Everything, everybody's happy so far. Monday morning, 8.30, 8 if you're happy and lucky enough to be this early um, in the office, you turn your machines on, the first thing you see is a bright red screen that says, ah, your files have been encrypted. Okay, what do you do? What does your organization do? You're first in. Who do you let know? Do you tell anybody or, do, or just wait back and say, maybe IT will come and sort this, right? Um, when, when more and more people coming into the organization get to work, you learn that their machines are exactly the same as your machine. Nobody can do anything, right? So later you learn that um, some malware has come into the organization, um, and part of the thing that, of that particular bit of malware was a data destruction piece of code. Basically, it, it, it looked at all your files, started um, encrypting them so nobody can access them. Oh dear. That means all the workstations in the, in the business are dead. All the servers that serve up all the files are now encrypted. The organization is dead. Um, we are, and we are only not even reached our first cup of coffee or nine o'clock in the morning. So, for most organizations at this stage on a Monday morning, it's game over. Right, everybody go home, we'll turn it, we'll try turning it back off and back on again, see if that works. If it doesn't, we will need to do something. But surely, if we're a larger organization connected to the government and so on, these things are not supposed to happen. Okay, so why can't these things happen? Or why are they not supposed to happen? Yeah, um, basically, the tools that, that these ransomware bits were bit built on are not your normal script kiddie kind of level thing. This is on a much higher level. All right, so, um, for example, NotPetya was spread through an update to an accounting package. Okay, so there's not much you could have done with that. Right, but you should have had other things. Now, it has the same weapons grade exploit as WannaCry, one of the tools that was um, stolen from the NSA earlier on. This thing can spread around the world in minutes. You don't have a lot of time to say, well, uh, let's see what any, anybody else said. Maybe they've got an idea you know, on how to fix it. This was a, a target, well, the intention of this software was a military target in the Ukraine. But as with most exotic pets, they, you know, they tend to ex, you know, escape in the wild, and once they're in the wild, it has loads and loads of other things. Now, the intent was not to extort money, was to actually destroy data, put for example, military organizations out of business, effectively. The downside was it affected a whole lot of other things. Bits of the NHS, banking, government sites, everything else. All, all, um, all got affected in this. So, 
We always have to think about when something like this goes round, what are the unintended consequences that's going to come from this? Now, um, you could have potentially saved a business. Um, maybe you had some kind of mitigation in place. Maybe you were still getting around to it. Our organization was going to do um, this implementation next quarter once the budgets have been approved. Maybe, if we have enough time for staff. But it doesn't matter. This was indiscriminate. It didn't matter whether you were a government agency, a corner shop, or anything. But we all now face these kind of risks of losing our businesses overnight. So how did it affect some businesses? For example, Mesk, major shipping organization. They have had to reinstall 45,000 desktops and over 4,000 servers. So, and as you can imagine, having nearly 50,000 machines dead in your organization that's vitally important to you, yeah, it's, a, you know, it's a very big thing. Okay, so let's look at some real exercises as well. So you walk in Monday morning, there are media reports that claim that anonymous um, group intend to attack the Scottish government. All right, now it may say Scottish government, but maybe anything connected with the Scottish government. So therefore it can be um, Scottish government, it could be national infrastructure, it could be charities, it could be NHS, it could be anything that has Scotland in, you know, in the name. Right, so um, sometimes this may be a politically motivated attack, right? So Russians hacking um, presidential campaigns, etc., and so on. Okay, so, but let's, let's, let's have a look at Scotland and where there's specific targets that may be targeted. Okay, so how are you going to find out whether you are going to be a target? Or how do you, how would you know that such a threat has been leveled against Scotland. How would, how would you know? Anybody an idea so far? No? Okay, so to combat this, especially for organizations like yourself, you need to have some threat intelligence. You need to have some information from somewhere to say, hey, we are going to be attacked. What can we do? Um, Given there's some information, how is your organization going to respond? Or are you just going to say, nah, we're too small, we're not part of that network, we won't be, in, no, we won't be attacked. Okay, so, so you have to think about what it is that you are going to do. So move along to, tw uh, to Tuesday about lunchtime. So Anonymous say, well, they've defaced a whole bunch of websites. Um, mostly of the SNP constituencies, and that, in, you know, including that of the Deputy First Minister, Mr. John Swinney. Right, so Police Scotland say, yes, we can confirm that there has been an attack on the Scottish Government. Right, so, and they are investigating a, a couple of things. By the way, this is a real example. This really happened, okay? So, so you would think, okay, so what, so what are we going to do? How would you know, besides the thing being leaked on Twitter or something like that, or reaching the BBC News, how is that going to be communicated to your organization that the threat level has now stepped up? How would, how would you approach this? What would you be doing? Do you have a plan for, for handling these kind of incidents? Okay. So. On the question of threat intelligence, there is a free system you can uh, get membership of. It is a very closed community to businesses and organizations like yourself. They have various groups inside that, that can, where you can talk to like-minded people, including the National Cybersecurity Center and experts from the National Cybersecurity Center. Now, 
The system is called CISP. Um, if, if you want to enroll, can I ask anybody that's already a member of CISP? Yeah, one, okay, it's a start. But the system is free and they provide a huge amount of um, information to let you know these are the attacks that, that, uh, that, that are happening and these are the things you need to do to keep your organization safe because the attack is coming because some other people have already started posting about it. Um, the group is completely confidential. The information commissioner is not part of it. Okay, so you can discuss stuff there with the National Cyber Security Center. You can discuss there stuff with Police Scotland and the National Crime Agency and everything else. Okay, so, so you can talk there very, very confidently. And it is run by, by the government. And, and it's not to be a thing that says, ooh, I don't want to tell anybody. The side here is how can we help everybody in getting the, the latest um, amount of information. Okay, so, so when you log in, it's, a, it's a quite a big portal. Um, you, can, you can look for charity sectors, public bodies, all kinds of things, and they have various different channels that you can follow, subscribe to, and so on. So the moment a threat comes along and you're in that group, you will get an email to say, somebody has posted something about it, read about the threat, read about what it is that, that you need to do to stop this particular attack. Okay, so let's move on. Wednesday, another day. We find, get into work, Website's down. Oh dear. Um, it's a denial of service attack. So somebody is attacking our website, or the businesses, or your charity's website, or the government's website, or so on. Everything is down. What are we doing? What, what are you going to be doing? Do you have an incident, an incident response plan? Let's say, if our system goes down, like the web, this is what we are going to do. Don't, don't try and get up the plan when the website's down already, because that's only going to complicate things. Do you have a recovery plan? Um, do you have cyber as part of your business continuity plan? Right? So it's not just about the building burning down, but what are you going to do with your digital services? Okay. so. But um, four o'clock in the afternoon, the website's slow, the attack is still continuing. All right, so now imagine the scenario where, you are, where people are trying to apply for grants or receive payments for grants and all kinds of things. Um, you know, they're gonna be pretty unhappy and very soon, um, there's going to be a couple of questions that's going to be asked. A, what are you thinking at this moment? What are your plans for fixing this? Um, have you got a plan ready to what you're going to say to the media? Are you going to say to the media, nah, we're fine? Or are you going to make something up that may inflame things later on? Do you have something in place? Who are you going to tell externally to your organization? Now remember, if your organization is connected to the Scottish government in some way, um, the attack on your site is also going to impact the government site. So who is going to get involved? Police? Ministers? Some local government department? The National Cyber Security Center? Or are you going to try and make it go away before they find out? Now, the the thing is not about are they going to find out. It is these are resources available that can help you get back on the road really, really quickly. The National Cyber Security Center are really good and they offer quite a lot of advice. You can phone them up and they will give you inf information over the phone to help you get back on the road. Okay? The cyber divisions in Police Scotland they are extremely helpful as well. Okay, so, Thursday, 
The denial of service has now ended. Everything is up and running. Woohoo! Okay, so we've lost three full days of work. But now the media are now saying, well, <clears throat> sir, your website has been appalling over the last few days. We are extremely unhappy about how you delivered a service to the public, if you were delivering a service to the public. Okay, so, so there will be organizations that will spin their own story about how bad your organization handled all this. Now, um, you are now being asked as an organization to respond and comment about how this attack could uh, link to the anonymous claim that you saw or that was announced earlier in the week. Did you know about it? Did you not do anything about it? Or how did you, did you fail to prepare for, for any of this? So again, what would you be thinking about at that point of, you know, in that point of time? What would you be doing? And at what level in the organization are you gonna address this particular problem? All of these are things that you can ask and do stuff on the CISP portal. Okay, so another scenario, Black Friday. So a zero day attack is an attack where there is no patch available yet. So Microsoft has, hasn't released a patch, um, the software vendors haven't released a pack, and now you're being attacked by something that you don't have any defenses about. Um, is this going to spread a ransomware thing on your website? What are going to do? And this also happens to be on one of the key days in your organization, the day that everybody needs to put in their, their grants or grant documentation or get papers done to, or apply for tenders or anything like this. Okay, so now a lot of organizations are gonna miss the deadlines and everything else. Lots of unhappy people. Right, again, asking the same questions, what will be your immediate considerations? Does your business plan cover things like this? Do we have a backup plan? What are we gonna do? Who else is involved in this particular attack? Right, so um, the, because this is on a key thing, lots and lots of money is involved, who, do, who would be uh, notify this? Would the police be involved? What about the National Cyber Security Center? Have you contacted them already in the beginning of the week when you had, to get some, when you had a chance to get some threat intelligence? What about Scottish government? And does your company have a policy? Are we gonna pay, not pay the ransomware? By the way, for those who are dithering about mm, pay, no pay, there is a website run by the Dutch police and Europol and so on. It's called nomoransom.org. So you can go there and see whether there is a fix for your particular infection, okay? Chances are the fix will arrive like two weeks later, right? But still, you know, but two weeks already you should have um, aligned all these things. All right, so Friday, 12 noon, um, your IT team say, yes, the attack is now in full swing. It's wormed through the network and it is encrypting everything. Oh dear. Are we gonna start doing backups now? Mm. Because Friday is a backup day, isn't it? So, so if we restore from backups today on Friday, so we'll lose the whole week's work. Oh dear. Okay, so there's, so there's a lot of things that you can do. Ask the same questions again. <laughs> what are we gonna know? Not panic is one of the key words. And again, do you get other folks involved? Have you got arrangements with other organizations 
that can help you in this moment. For example, does your organization have the competency to deal with this particular attack? Do you have the skills in-house? Have you trained your internal staff, IT staff, to be um, cyber resilient with um, some cyber security expertise? What are you gonna do? Who is gonna talk to the media? Have you practiced this over? Have you had a dry run through this already? Okay, keyword, don't panic. What expertise, advice, and notifications are you going to do? Who are you going to tell again? There's all of these things that you need to consider. But the main thing is, don't not tell anybody. You have to tell somebody. There are resources available that you can get an instant response back. Okay, so, now um, the IT team managed to um, isolate the particular attack. They contained the machines that are spreading the infections, but, you know, staff are still not able to work and they cannot do anything with the website. So it looks like something's back, but in the background, loads of things are still broken. So what, do you, what decisions do you make? Do you put up a holding page that says, we've been hacked? Uh, no. Okay, that would be a really bad idea. Again, how would you communicate those issues to the general public to say, we have a temporary problem with our website, our guys are working on it. Do you say that, they've, that, that you've been hacked? Do you say, you know, just what do you communicate on that, right? Um, are your team on the CISP extranet? Again, the free resources available from the government that can tell you what the next step should be, who to call. Is there a local technical group in your area that can attend really, really quickly to your, to your organization, right? Right, so um, Friday, four o'clock, attacks continue. Now, Scottish government give notice that, um, yeah, there's this identical um, attack on, your, on their network. They, you know, they're seeing it. However, you, your organization, is the source of the attack. Oops, okay. At the same time, your businesses or your organization's Twitter account has been hacked and a lot of disinformation is being spread, extremely visible. Okay, that's happened a lot as well. How, how do you respond to this? Do you go on Twitter and say, it was near us? Right. Because this was a direct attack on the Scottish government from your, from your organization, um, there'll be some senior ministers that'll be asking questions, demanding answers. How did this happen? Why did it happen? How come you've not done anything about it? At the same time, when the minister is going off his head, he'll be asking the questions about your board your executive board. How are they gonna fix it? What things are they gonna put in place to make this go away? And what have you done so far to call for assistance? Okay, you know, it may seem that all of the questions at all of this seem to who you're gonna call, what you're gonna say, what you're gonna do about it. It's all about having to stand up and say, I need to contact the National Cybersecurity Center. I need to be a member of CISP so I can get some valuable threat intelligence from that. Okay, so, five o'clock, yes, massive attack happened during the week. Anonymous says, it was us. Yes. I'm not gonna say freedom, but you know. So, um, so that, now they claim that they have now breached the Scottish government servers. They are now in control and they are going to do this because 
the cybersecurity configurations were lax. You were not taking the cybersecurity serious. Okay. So how is your organization going to respond to that? That you were not doing enough about cybersecurity. What is your approach going to be? BBC knocks on the door, lots of bright lights. Guy with a big microphone says, so, can you tell us about this? What happened? Did you do anything to prevent this? Are you prepared for the interview? Okay. Now, fortunately now, a week passes. You've got control over your network. Everything seems fine. The Scottish government has now contained the malware within its network. There's no further spread. <sighs> Let's go to the pub, right? Disaster averted, except given the incident, you, need, you now need to review how your organization handled the event. Are there things you could have done better? Are there things that in hindsight that you could have known in advance to do? Is there something, um, like for example, is there somebody else involved in this particular attack? Not just it was us, but is there something bigger happening? Would you share the lessons learned from this? Now remember, you can share all of this on CISP, and it can, it'll be treated confidentially by the people that you share it with. For example, the police, the National Cyber Security Center, and the National Crime Agency, and so on. But you need to be able to be in a position to do this, so that at least there is help from other organizations to say, Ooh, we need to do something about this. You can report this anonymously as well. Okay, you don't have to say, us as an organization has been hacked. You can report us anonymously. Okay, so, and finally, almost finally, so about a month later, um, after the tax, an employee walks into a, police, uh, in a, into a police station and says, it was me, this gruntled employee, says, I did this. And the reasons why I did that was because I had concerns about the poor security within the organization. I wasn't happy the way things were going. So I decided that I'm going to do something about it. Oh, and by the way, you know that attack that you've now worked through and sorted everything else? A week later, I still have access to your network, by the way. Oh dear. Okay, so, 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 so panic mode sets in. Um, so while you were dealing with all of these denial of service attacks and attacks on your website and everything else, all of that was a distraction to keep you away what was really happening in, on the network. Then downloading lots of confidential data from your servers so, so that this so that the, the downloading would go unnoticed in the mass of other traffic and, and hacking that has been going on on the other things. So suddenly you realize, Phew, not only are we now in a, in a more serious position of just being attacked and attacking the Scottish government, all our data is now, has now been downloaded. And not even that, They've all published it on some website, and the first you, knew, you know about the data being published is when the information commissioner comes knocking on the door. So, um, Mr. Charity Organization, can you tell me about this data, please? How did, how did it end up in, in the public domain? Okay, so a lot of bad news, but, you know, the whole disaster starts all over again because you're having to deal with this again. Who are you going to tell? Who are you going to notify? 
Are the police going to be involved? Are you going to make a statement to the media, to the Scottish government, to ministers? Are you going to be in front of an inquiry? How much is the inquiry going to cost? Probably millions. Okay. Um, we have to look at the reputational risk and everything else. But fortunately, there's, there's, the, there's not all doom and gloom. There is some hope out there. What the government has done, um, they have created a scheme called Cyber Essentials. And what they've done is they've taken, a, or they've put together a set of questions. And it's about 34 or so questions. And they've said, right, out of all the breaches we've seen, these are the things you're supposed to have done to avoid those breaches. For example, have a well-configured firewall. We'll come to all of the bits before. Right. Are you patching? Are you updating? Are you protecting systems with antivirus and all those kind of things? Are your systems up to date? Right. So you can apply for, for the Cyber Essential Certificate. Um, there's, two, there's, there's two kinds. Cyber Essentials, which is just a, a, the questionnaire that you have to fill in to see how do we stack up. And there is Cyber Essentials Plus, where an auditor will come out to your organization and they will help you through the, through the process of getting fully certified. Now, with the advent of grants and everything else, it's now going to come mandatory for anybody who wishes to apply for a grant from an organization that they have to have a Cyber Essential Certificate. It's going to become mandatory to have that. Right? And then it's not the question, oh, then it's not the time to ask, so what's Cyber Essentials? Right, so, so, the, the, so, so in, in short, the domains that are, are covered are boundary firewalls, you know, what are we doing, keeping traffic out, you know, how are, how are our desktops and stuff configured? Are we up to date on patching? Access control? Um, what about things like strong passwords and so on? What are we do, doing about antivirus, patch management, and so on? So those are the basics that you need to complete. Now, as we know, target attacks are increasing. And from what we've seen before, it's not a matter of when, it's just a matter of understanding that this may have already happened to you.